Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki here, and we are, I'm just showing you this, this setup of this map. It's a bunch of tiles, including that grass tile in the background. And what I'm going to do is select all these trees, and then I'm going to activate a macro. And I'm going to make these trees instantly go into like a fall color scheme. Every time I click the macro, it uh, makes them turn a different, different set of colors. Then I'm going to add some fruit to this tree. And to this one, I'm going to add some, some flowers. And, and then in this middle tile here, I'm going to add some grass, uh, some more grass on top of the image that I already had. And what I'm doing is I'm transforming my scene using a new technique uh, called uh, overlays. And here I'm, I'm adding a river and then I'm going to open up this really cool UI and I'm going to manipulate the orientation of that river. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, um, change its rotation. And now I've, I've got a river running through my scene. Okay. So let's see what else we can do. I'm going to take this rock here and I'm going to add some moss to it because I want it to kind of embed into the scene, look like it's got moss all over it. I'm going to uh, actually put some vines on top of this um, you know, kind of wrap this, this wagon with the coffin in it with some vines. Because again, I want it to sort of embed into the scene as like these things have been sitting here for a long time. I'll add some more kind of overlay effects to the grass and we'll do the same thing. Add some more kind of moss to that, to that wagon as well. And then I'm going to come over here to this guard tower and I'm going to go to my roof layer. And, uh, let's see, let's make this guard tower like burned, like it's, like it's damaged, scorched. And then I'll add some damage to it. So I'm going to expose some damage, uh, in this roof. And then I'm, I'm going to go back, open this, this fancy UI, which I'll explain to you guys what, what we're doing here in a second. And I'm going to kind of move around the damage until it looks like it's in the spot that I want it to be. And you can see this scene is already looking very, very different than where we started. Now I'm going to select my trees again, and this time I'm going to change their color pattern to like a Fey color pattern. And it's doing it instantly and it's randomizing it. And then I'm going to change my background to, I don't know, this purple color. And I'm going to start manipulating some of those overlay effects that you saw me apply just a second ago. And I get this really cool UI that lets me change each one of them individually. And what I'm going for is like, I just want to change this whole scene to like a Fey, Fey wild scene. Right. And I'm doing it with just a couple of mouse clicks and it's pretty fast. And so I'm going to show you today how I'm doing all this stuff. I'm even changing like the, the color and the Z order of these different effects. This is new. This is a new thing that hasn't existed. In fact, if you want to test this out, I've got a bunch of free assets for you to use and, uh, you're going to have to use, um, a test build of token magic effects. I'll explain, uh, what's happened here, but notice here, like if this was a wintry scene, I, maybe I want to cover this in frost and ice. Um, and you know, maybe I want to do, you know, the same thing with, uh, with this cannon here, by the way, this is, this is a cannon that Gorgon made, uh, it's in my, one of my packs here. And I'm just showing you how all these different assets that are just sitting around in the scene as tiles, how they can be changed. So here I've got vines kind of going in and out of that exploding barrel. Right. Um, so this is really, really fun. I have the same assets, but with a bunch of these overlay uh, effects possible to lay on top of them. And this is going to very dramatically increase the utility that you get out of whatever artwork that you're using, especially if you're using artwork that's tile based. Um, and you can make scenes like this. I think this is like five tiles and then just some spider web overlays. You can see some of the tiles kind of moving around there. And, you know, here's a, here's a scene where I've got it totally overgrown, right? And I'll just show you some of the artwork, see how clean that is before I apply a, 
um, you know, these, these filters to it, that statue, these, you know, vine covered uh, pillars, you see they're very clean when I dropped them in, but by adding all these overlay effects, I can quickly take a scene and make it seem overgrown or damaged or burned or covered in spider webs or covered in blood. You, you can take a scene like this that is, you know, kind of a summary version and you can winterize it pretty quickly and pretty effectively. And so uh, this is what we're going to talk about today. So get ready for the tutorial. Okay, so everything that I just showed you and everything you see on the screen is part of a much larger release that came out today. It's it's March 3rd, 2023, and there's a bunch of new 2D and 3D releases, but all of the overlays came out in today's release. So where these are all initially located is in my free nuts and bolts module. Now, when I say it's free, that module is free. You can download it from the Foundry directory, and there's a bunch of really helpful filters and macros in there. And some of them don't work unless you have my content, just because it's calling back like special tiles and things like that. But in that nuts and bolts module, if you go here, these are all the free ones. So I've taken a number of these overlays and I've just taken a certain section of them and said, let's put these out for free in the nuts and bolts module. So if you want to try these out, you can just go to this little glowing person here. Uh, if you're looking for it in the module directory, you'll see it's under macro wheel and it's all these free overlays here. The premium ones, you can technically use them, but they're calling out assets that are inside my premium module. So you'd need to get the premium module, specifically the towns module, in order to have the premium ones work. So as far as setups, you're going to want to get Bailey Wiki Nuts and Bolts that has all of the free and the premium versions of these overlays. You can get it from the, um, the Foundry directory. You're also going to want to get Token Magic Effects. Uh, from Secret Fire, and then you're going to want to get uh, Mass Edit by by Adif. Now, I have the Patreon version, which lets me create randomization uh, effects. It basically lets me use the, the randomization options there. Um, I won't go into that today, but it's super cool. Now, you can use all of the macros that are created from that with the free version. So if you want to just use all of my macros that I created, you can use that with the free version of Mass Edit. If you want to create your own randomization macros, you need to subscribe to the Patreon version. I highly recommend supporting Adif. Adif is solving all kinds of things in super interesting ways. I've only covered Mass Edit because I think it's the best module in the Pantheon this year, um, but you should check out everything else that Adif is doing and, uh, and give them some support uh, if you like uh, some of the stuff, but mass edit as a module is uh, just second to none in usefulness. I mentioned nuts and bolts. You also need the towns module uh, to work. If you subscribe, you can get all of these overlays and everything else in this huge release from this month, just for eight bucks at the foundry basic tier on my Patreon. If you want to go higher than that, you can get 3d content, lighting pages, and other things that are available. Now, the other thing you need to know about Token Magic Effects is I'm actually on a test build, and that's the most important thing that you need to know here. I'm going to link to that test build. It's a, uh, it's a manifest that uh, Adif created. It's the test build that makes all of these overlays work. Um, at some point, I expect that Secret Fire will merge these into the main module, and then you can just update it like normal. You don't have to worry, you shouldn't have to worry at least about um, changing that. You should just be able to update and get the latest. But this is a test build of Token Magic Effects. I'll put the manifest URL in the video description. You have to use that if you want these overlays to work. It's what has the, uh, the new sprite filter that makes all of this work. You also see me using Macro Wheel. It is a premium module by Ripper. There is a, another module called Macro Manager. I haven't used it yet, but it looks really promising. I'm going to link to it also in the video description. You can check that out if you don't want to have the wheel functionality. Just to show you quickly my settings for Macro Wheel, I will just scan through these. If you're wondering why yours doesn't perform the same way that mine does, just check these settings, pause it here, and make sure that you're using the same settings that I'm using. Here's my mass edit settings. I don't think I've ever changed these, but you can take a look at these and uh, and copy these as well. And finally, here's my token magic effect settings. Again, I don't think I'd had to do anything on these. Uh, I may have uh, adjusted these over time, but you can take a look at my settings if yours are any different. This shows you all of my overlay effects. Now I have these set up 
at about eight by eight squares at I think 200 DPI. You can play around with whether that's too much or too little for you. Uh, most of them are uh, seamless, so they do, um, you know, they, they do tile. Um, not all of them do. It depends on like what function I wanted, whether they tile or not. Um, but you can just take a look at how I designed these and you can go and make your own. I used Dungeon Draft for this. I used a lot of, I used some uh, just uh, Clip Studio uh, stuff. I used some components from Dungeon Quill, who has just a lot of really good like paths and other things that I thought were helpful. So take a look at how I did these and feel free to recreate your own. Like these are all Dungeon Quill spider webs, for example all done in a way that makes them tileable. It's relatively complicated to do that. I won't try to go into it here. And then I have some experimental things like being able to put table clutter on anything. Um, I don't have a macro for this, but you can play around with it and just apply clutter, rotate it around, and basically any surface you can put clutter on. Of course you can do it with tiles, but I'm trying to sort of stretch the limits of overlays to see what's possible. Okay, so how is this all possible? Because this wasn't available until now. What happened was I was in a conversation with Adif, who is the uh, the developer of Mass Edit, And I was talking about this idea that I've had some time about a token magic effects filter that could apply overlay effects. And what he was able to do is generate, uh, I don't know, a line or two of code and then submit it to Secret Fire, and the result is uh, this new filter that essentially is a sprite filter. So it takes advantage of the sprite functionality that's already existed in Token Magic Effects, and it creates something that can essentially uh, be masked against a tile. And I'll show you here in detail how it technically works. Now, some of the stuff that you're gonna need if you want overlays to work is uh, this macro uh, token magic effects edit uh, from mass edit. This is available in my nuts and bolts for free. Uh, you can also get it from Adif, I believe, if you download mass edit. And you can do most of what I'm gonna show you with the free version of mass edit. But what this macro does is it essentially lets you alter token magic effects filters. And it's extremely helpful uh, because when you select a filter, and uh, I've got it here on my macro wheel. By the way, I'm using Ripper's macro wheel, which is a premium module. I thought it was good for this demo. There are some alternatives, and I have a link to one. I think it's called Macro Manager, but it's uh, linked inside of the video description. But I'll open up this macro to, um, or I'll, I'll execute it to show you how it works. So first of all, it'll open it up and it'll let you save whatever current filter is applied as a preset or it'll list all of the filters that are applied. In this case, I just have one filter. And when you open it up, open it, up it essentially gives you a UI for token magic effects, which is really cool. Usually we had to like manipulate the JSON and um, because of mass edit, now we have like this UI with like these really simple sliders and you'll see it reflects your changes as you make them so really powerful and when it comes to overlays it's imperative that we have this so it's really mass edit and token magic effects coming together to make overlays like this really possible so let me walk you through the settings that it actually changes so uh, first of all this is using the sprite filter we probably won't make changes to that a uh, filter id is important you can apply any number of filters as long as their ids are unique or I believe if they're blank. So you can make this blank or you can uh, give it a unique ID and that way you can double up on filters. And certain things like snow, I have set up to where I can double or even triple up the snow. I have unique filters for all of those so you can add a lot or a little. Image path, of course, is gonna be important. It lets you change the image path from here. And it's pretty smart. It lets you, here's where all of my filters are located. And so I can just change to another one here really quickly on the fly, give it a new name for a filter ID and even make a preset or, or a unique macro out of it. Um, whether I want it to repeat is also important, but let me show you this first, alpha discard. So if I turn that off, you can see without the alpha discard, you can just see what the, the normal overlay looks like. And if I want it to repeat, you can see now it's tiled. Uh, and it works much better with tileable overlays. So if you know how to make tileable overlays, you can make them in GIMP and other places. You can make your own overlays. Um, but in this case, I have it repeating, and then I have it set to discard. That way it masks to the tile itself. You can also do colorize, which is super cool and very flexible. Um, here you can see, especially if it's white, it really takes color really, really well. 
You can have it inverse. It's very, very flexible and it lets you take all of the things I've already created and do a lot more even than I was originally anticipating with it. Uh, grid padding is not going to matter, matter too much because you're ultimately conforming everything to the size of the tile. Padding helps when you want to ex exceed the, uh, the hitbox of the tile. Scale is also extremely helpful. You can create all different kinds of looks just by scaling. You can see I've just got now just a lot more, um, you know, flat sort of um, snow application. Depending on the size of your tile, you may want to um, manipulate the X and Y. Also, this is relatively square in size. If it wasn't, it would be distorted and you can sort of undistort it by coming in here and changing some of these dimensions. Uh, translation lets you move things left and right and up and down. So, you know, if I turn off alpha discard and I start translating, you can see I'm just moving the image, uh, you know, upright, left or down. Rotation is also helpful. Whoops. Let's have that repeat in alpha discard. Rotation lets you just change the rotation of the image. So you can get really precise depending on what your overlay image is, where it's going to land and how it's going to work. And then alpha can also be really helpful if you want to make the, the overlay texture a little bit more understated. You can see it washes out pretty quickly to the point where you don't even know necessarily that it's like a snow texture. But if you play with this just a little bit, you can see it'll let you see more of the artwork underneath. Uh, versus making it um, hide under the uh, the overlay. Uh, top is whether the overlay goes above or below the tile. In this case, you're really always going to want it on top. If I got rid of the alpha discard, you can see now I've got this sitting on a snowy background. But for the most part with sprites, uh, you're going to want to have it sit above. And then rank is also super helpful because you can apply multiple overlays. You want to be able to change um, which ones are on top of the other. So this is almost just like your Z order for overlays. And you can just uh, make the Z order smaller or make it taller. If you want it to go on top, you should go with a higher number and on the bottom, a lower number. It's very, very helpful, like you saw in the demo. And then if you want to just disable an overlay, you can just disable it really quickly from here. Now, when you launch this macro for the first time, you may not see sliders. So one of the things you need to know with the way that Mass Edit works is it will open up all of the fields first, but it doesn't necessarily know what a large or a small value is or how those values should increment. So if you open it up and you don't see these sliders, what you do is go over to your, um, your field here and you will right click it. And because I've already set mine, I can't right click it. So let me close this. And then I'll open it back up again. And you can see it got rid of my values here. So now I can right click it again. And for scale, I might want to set up, you know, zero is the minimum and the maximum uh, might be like four. And I want it to go in increments of, let's say, 0.1. And you're going to want your Y scale to be the same. Now, if we go back and open it up. You can see we have sliders again. And now we can change our scales quite a bit. Right. So that's how you use that particular function. And you want to do it with the rest of these. Uh, notice with translation, I have it going from negative one. Uh, to positive one, I, I felt like that gave me the most ability to move it around uh, the tile as I needed to. So remember, you can go negatives with these. And then rotation, for example, I have going from zero to 360. So that lets me just cover all of the angles. And uh, some of the rest of these should be pretty straightforward. Notice you, if that filter has other elements to it, they might be disabled. But you can notice here, you can actually rotate your effect. So I don't know when you would use this. You guys are creative enough to figure it out, but you can create these compound effects and then be able to come in and change, you know, some of their, uh, some of their values, right? So let me show you how I made these overlay macros and filters. So we're going to go to the crisscross overlay sprite. This is a token magic effects sprite. And when you press it, you see it'll have this um, design and it'll look just like this. Now using our mass edit we can open that up 
and we get the ability to go in and change the sprite. So we'll change this. We'll use, we'll use this blood. Put that into here. Click apply changes. And you see it added that blood. It might look strange because we still have to make some other changes to it. We're not going to colorize this. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to take away that opacity. You can see we've already started to get this. We may play our rotate, uh, make the rotation go a little bit that direction. And that's feeling pretty good. Now, if we say apply changes, it brings us back to the screen. And then we're going to use the save as preset. When we press it. We actually have two different things that we can do here. This is all of the JSON code that makes this particular filter work. And if we hit control A and copy, and then we come down here and we create a new macro, make it a script macro, called test overlay. And we paste all of that code in here. Now, if we delete this and we come back here to our new macro that we just made, and it gives it exactly how we had saved it. Of course, you can have more than one effect on here. So if we add, for example, more blood, go to edit it. Now we can see these other components that we've added to it. And if we save that as a preset, we'll see that we actually have multiple presets coded into it. And so this will make all three presets work anytime we use the same macro. You notice also this down here, you have a preset name. If you don't know Token Magic Effects, you can actually create work called presets and you save it into Token Magic Effects. Some of you may be wondering how to do that. This is actually an easy way to do it. And you can name this preset. You can call it like BaileyWiki Custom Blood. And if you click then the save as preset, by the way, I could have just backed out of there and just used the JSON and made this. But now that it's a preset, I can use it in other places where Token Magic Effects presets are used. There's also a handy mass edit macro called apply preset. And if you have it imported into your world and you execute it, it opens up and it looks for all of the other preset names and even has a fancy little type ahead where you can type Bailey Wiki custom blood, it'll find it in the list. And now you can apply that same preset on something else here. I just double apply that preset. So that's how you make your own filters. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to create some of these cool macros that mass edit does just all on its own. So I'm going to select a tile, press shift E. It's going to open up the normal mass edit window. And then I, what I want to do is I want to randomize the color of this, uh, the tint of this tile. So I'm going to right click the tint and it's going to give me these, uh, this default randomization of all the colors in the rainbow. You can change your, uh, color scheme and it will give you and all these other methods and it'll show you what range visually that it's going to randomize. So we're just going to use the normal rainbow here. Then we're going to randomize the scale of this tile. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say from 0.8 to 1.2 and step size of 0.1. And then the last thing I'm going to do is rotation, right click zero to 360. I'm going to rotate it in increments of five this time and say randomize. And then I'm going to select these little gears down here. And now when I select these select and deselect, it's going to randomly rotate all those things. Pretty cool, right? So it just kind of shows you what's going to happen. Now, instead of saying apply changes, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click this little prompter here. And this opens up a new macro creator for me. I'm going to call this a uh, random color size and scale. Maybe I want to use something like this for dropping bushes down or trees. I'm going to say all selected. And, and then I'm going to say, I want to toggle or I'm going to update. So every time I apply it, it's going to re-update this, this, um, randomization method versus toggle, which means it'll just make it random and it'll turn it off again. So it'll remember it's, it's earlier state. Then I'm going to say, um, select targets. Actually, I don't think I need to select targets because I don't have any token magic effects filters applied. So this should work. Let's generate our macro. 
now I should be able to just execute it. And it now rotates and randomizes color, size, and rotation. Cool, right? So you can apply that to really anything else. And it'll keep applying that special macro to anything else that you apply. So just keep that in mind. It's a really cool way. Randomization is a premium feature of mass edit, but it's super worth it. If you create a macro that uses this premium feature, others can still use it with the free mass edit, but in order to create the macro in the, uh, to, in the first place, you need to be on the Patreon version. Notice I have some other utilities here that are really important. I have the uh, delete filters on selected. You can find this in token magic effects. You can also find it in nuts and bolts. Mine is a garbage can, whereas uh, token magic effects has like a broom sweeping. But this lets you delete an effect and just kind of clear out that particular tile. In case you're experimenting and you don't like it, you can just come here, wipe it out. Um, I also have tall and short overlay shadows. Uh, or drop shadows, I should say. These are really helpful if you're working with like trees, for example, and you want them to have uh, some some drop shadows underneath them. I've just got the regular uh, sprite uh, macro here that just comes with token magic effects in case you just want to use the standard. And then I use the, uh, the, the dungeon draft filter a lot. This is also a token magic effects filter. Notice though, if you are using mass edit and you use the shift edit function, which is how you engage mass edit, you have to have a tile selected or something selected, hit shift E and that will open up the ability to edit more than one tile at the same time if you have more than one selected. But you notice that Adif put this handy little dungeon draft component in here as well. That lets you just change colorable uh, tiles like this. This tile, for example, is colorable. So if I hit shift E and I come in here and I say, you know, because it has red pixels, I can change those to blue pixels. And if I hit apply changes, my roof now turns to blue. So anytime you have tiles that have red pixels, you can hit shift E as long as you have token magic effects installed and you can change the color to something else. I have a ton of these roofs and colorable assets, like all of these trees are all colorable. You see, when I move it, you see the original red, even these green ones are red, right? Now I'll just walk you through the filters that I made. You guys can tell me what I missed or, or what you would add to each of these categories or maybe something entirely new. So first of all, I wanted frost. I wanted to take any object, item, cart, barrel, or room and make it frosty. And so I've got different kinds of frost, snow well, with different cutouts. Again, I can resize these, move them around. This ice is semi-transparent so I can see the, the artwork underneath, but I can make things just like really icy and frosty. And I can double things up, right? So like I've got multiple ice overlays here. And if I do multiple, then it doubles up and I can, I can start adding more and more sort of chunks of ice and frost around here. This goes really well when you start wrapping like these uh, statues with ice and frost. You can really embed them and freeze them into a scene. It's super, super effective. I've got different kinds of snow just because you, I, I very often, I want to be able to apply snow to any roof. And so if you have different kinds of snow, notice like uh, here, the snow has a, a darker side and a lighter side. That's so that I can apply snow to a roof like this and have one side sort of be in the sun and one side have a little bit of a shadow. Um, I do, uh, I told you how I, I, I rename these. You see these little chevrons here, like this frost is 2B, whereas I have another frost that's 2A and then there's a 2C. And this is so that I can just uh, continue to apply more and more frost effects and have it be slightly different rotations. So if I, uh, if I open this up and show you uh, what's involved, uh, notice that my rotation is set to 73. Well, the other frosts are the exact same configuration, but with different rotations. And that just makes it so that I can slap them on top of each other. And they add again, more and more frost effect without uh, just uh, doubling up exactly. So we also have damage. So I wanted to be able to add cracks of different kinds. These cracks are colorable or they're white. Here's cracks that just show up in kind of the corners just to sort of distress things. Because I can add multiple things to each other, I can have different cracks sort of added on top. I can rotate them. I can make them larger or smaller. Here's more cracks that are colorable, but again, in more of a vignette style where the center is going to be empty, but you've got cracks around the edges. You can see that if the artwork has... Uh, shadows, which this has a black background, so you can't see the shadow, but it does have shadows. So the 
Overlays will go over the shadow. There is a way to remove that as well. There's another tokenmagic effects filter that removes shadows from artwork in case uh, you want to do that. I use that, for example, with the ropes and uh, chains. Um, if I go in here and I go to edit, you can see that I can use the zap shadow. That basically gets rid of or attempts to get rid of any drop shadows uh, within the artwork itself. And if I turn it off, you can see now the ropes will um, will go over those shadows versus this way I get rid of the shadows. I have it ranked at zero, so it happens for or close to zero. So it happens first and then it applies the ropes on top of that. So that's how you can get rid of that. Notice I didn't do that though with my, my vines. I wanted my vines to sort of merge into the floor and the environment around them. So with vines and like uh, moss, I have it uh, set to do that. And this one, in this case, I have three different chevrons of moss applied and you can see it adds a lot of moss around there versus maybe I just wanna use like one moss as a different type of moss here. I have different kinds of vines. This one has uh, an opening in the middle. And again, you can resize these so that you can, you know, expose or hide different parts of the, the artwork, um, you know, depending on what you want to do. So here it is really large, so large that you can't even see the vines anymore. Whereas as I start to make it a little bit smaller, you can see the, the, the vines are now sort of on the edges, but you can still see the artwork. Other kinds of damage, I wanted cracks. Again, these cracks can all be resized, which is super helpful. So I can come in here and I can make my cracks uh, very small on the artwork, or I can make them really huge and like, you know, really kind of transecting the whole thing, depending on what uh, size tile I'm working with. I can rotate them and I can even color them. So like with this, for example, this one's colorable in case I want to have like a red or green sort of area underneath that's colored. Uh, this is always super helpful. This is just scorch damage. So I have all these damage uh, uh, filters here, but scorch and roof are the two highly specialized ones. Scorch just applies in so many places. You can apply it to all kinds of things to make it look damaged. And then of course the damaged roof is a super fun one. I'll show you what this looks like. So it, so notice I have that D&D tint involved, so it recognizes that. But let me look at the roof uh, damage. If I take away alpha discard and then I shrink this down a little bit, you can see there's all kinds of roof damage in the same tile. I just, all I have to do is just rotate it around and move it around until I have the, um, you know, the damage where I want it and in the orientation that I want it. Um, this also lets me just like really quickly kind of like randomize things and make the damage um, on multiple roofs, not look uniform. It's important to know and um, be able to use your ranks. You know, this rank is higher than, um, like if I wanted to add frost here, I could do that. But now my frost is going over my, my damage and I may not want that, right? So then I would go back in here and edit. I would go to my um, uh, damage overlay, for example, and I would make it just a little bit higher. And now my damage overlay is in front of my frost. Okay, so then we also have these like large area overlays. And I took just a, a grass tile and, and made it very, very small. But this is where you can apply the uh, grass. So all of a sudden you can have just more grown, overgrown grass on top of existing grass. Or this one is more in like splotches, which again, you can resize, rotate, make bigger or smaller. So you can apply this and just very quickly get a more interesting background. Here we've got flowers that we can apply to a background just as a single overlay. Here we have overgrowth. This one's super fun. You can apply this to like, you've seen me use a lot of these terrain tiles recently. You can apply overgrowth to them and resize it, rotate it, and really quickly give um, any kind of map a lot of overgrowth in particular areas. Uh, you saw me also um, uh, do stuff here with rivers. If I go into the river sprite and I go into the tile picker, I go all the way down to my rivers. You can see I have all these rivers and paths. So I can replace the river with a path. I can make that path then larger or smaller. I've got examples of how I did that, but it's just different kinds of um, uh, rivers that you can select. And 
I, it shows some with a lot of variability, so you can move them around. You can have, you know, just show the straightaway area. You can have it, uh, you know, be curved and, and have like this little island in it. So a lot of flexibility as far as just um, adding these types of things on top. And then this one also is super flexible. So this is like really the ability to add any kind of terrain overlay. And so uh, if you guys have seen me um, in all of the different kinds of terrain overlays that I've been generating lately, it's just to be able to make um, tiles just more interesting. So all of a sudden, you know, this tile becomes really rocky, but there's a ton. I've got probably hundreds of these kinds of overlays. Here's just some in this folder, but I have so many overlay terrains in my, in my, arsenal that I can add just just tons and tons of stuff to this just within hills alone you can see I have a lot of overlays so like if I wanted there to be a rocky circle in the middle of this I can do that and then I just change the size dimensions make it so it doesn't repeat and I just added a rocky circle to this tile right so tons and tons of uh, flexibility there. I also wanted to be able to take any asset and make it uh, grungy. That's why I've been focused on making relatively clean looking assets because you can go, you can always take a clean asset and make it more grunge, but you can't go the other direction. So uh, this just shows you what these different levels of grunge look like. And you can, again, apply more than one, although they'll very quickly start to, uh, to get very, very dark. And then I've got what I call grunge dust, which is more of a vignette coverage, meaning this one you can barely see, meaning uh, it tends to thin out in the middle so that you can have your, um, you know, your artwork in the middle of the room or whatever's happening in the middle of the room be a little bit more um, exposed. This one's colorable, also works really well as, as snow. Um, but that's how those work. And then I have biological overlays. So I have different kinds and levels of webs where you can double and triple them up. Here's webs just completely covering a floor. And then I've also got blood where again, you can double, triple it up. And then I've got the different kinds of nature. So I have some presets where it'll automatically, thanks to the macro builder and the randomization options of mass edit, it'll automatically apply these sort of warm colors, right? Um, and then likewise, it'll automatically apply sort of random greens if I want it to be a summer or spring look. It just helps to create variability with your maps. And it gives you the ability to take a map that, uh, you know, is in the summer and then bring them back during the fall, bring your players back or transform it into a Feywild uh, type of color scheme. Right. And then, of course, you can add fruits and flowers and you can scale them up and down if you want your fruits or your flowers to be bigger or smaller. They're all colorable. So I don't know what you guys would think of as far as other options, right? Other things like being able to put chains and ropes around uh, around things or players. Um, but let me know in the comments if you have other ideas and I'm happy to make more of them. Uh, this was a ton of work just to create these, but I feel like I can kind of create anything now. And I, I just took my entire library and I just at least tripled the value of it as far as like how much I can use my assets. If you're using Forgotten Adventures or Dungeon Quill or Tom Cartos, these should all be helpful to you as far as taking those assets, those props and other things and being able to merge them into a scene and make them uh, kind of look and have um, maybe what the original artist didn't intend, but this gives you the power to add that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun to create these. I'm really excited that this potential even exists now. Um, there's a lot that I just feel like I can do now as I'm, you know, designing my scenes. And, and it lets me use, again, all of the existing stuff that I've already got from all these great artists, including my own stuff. So uh, you guys let me know what you think and, you know, how you uh, want me to think about this going forward and whether there's other kinds of overlays that you think are possible. I was thinking of things like, uh, you know, gold hoard and stuff like that. But maybe you guys will think of some really fun stuff as well. And feel free to link to it and share it. Uh, with me on my discord or in the comments here and so that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed this and until i see you next time thanks for all the support on the channel like and subscribe add comments ask questions that all helps me and my team get our content out there and get it seen by others we've had a lot of people moving over from roll 20 and other systems when they see what's possible on foundry so i appreciate everyone who interacts on our channel and helps us spread that word and get the message out and uh, until I see you next time, thanks everybody and have fun making your maps.